This is my mechanically governed water turbine and it's a complete failure. However, in this video, I want to explain why failure when you're designing projects isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, it's actually good. So let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. So as I said, this is my attempt at a mechanically governed water turbine designed to spin up a load from a garden hose. The concept was to visually demonstrate a mechanical governor, which is the sort of thing you'll see on steam engines in those sort of old timey films. A mechanical governor has these big steel balls and they spin around and the, uh, the centrifugal force pushes them outwards. And by moving outwards, it moves a linkage which controls the amount of throttle or steam through a valve um, going through the engine. So it actually throttles the engine and stops it going too fast and blowing up or <laughs> damaging components. And I wanted to demonstrate a mechanical governor on something. So I thought a water source might be an interesting way to do it. You have a load and you want to apply a certain amount of pressure to that load. And if it goes too fast, it will reduce the pressure and goes too slow, it'll increase it. However, let me just make it very clear. I have no idea about fluid dynamics. I did not study engineering. I'm an industrial designer and you spend multiple years learning fluid dynamics. So yeah, and this project was a really interesting look into actually driving something, a turbine off a, a mains water pressure. But to get to this point, I went through various iterations. So on Maker's Muse, often when I show off a project video, you'll just see the final result, like with the Spherocons or the, the Rubik's Cubes. Um, I very rarely will show you everything that leads up to it, mostly because it's kind of boring, but I actually put a lot of effort into things that you will never even see to get to a final product. And I thought this video would be a good example because even though I've gotten to this stage, it's still not right. And I kind of have a rule, which I call the three prototype rule. Basically, when you're designing a mechanical project, like you're 3D designing something, printing it out, going through prototypes, your first one will almost always be wrong, but that's okay. You wanna get your first prototype out really quickly. You want your first prototype to be fast. You wanna rush it out and get it out and print it so you can have it in your hands and you get that tactile feedback to really see what needs to be improved. The first prototype will almost always be wrong. So don't spend forever in the 3D workspace trying to get it right because there'll probably be things you need to change. So this was my first prototype of the water turbine. And the, uh, the drive sort of uh, paddle wheel, I guess, is my first indication that I have no idea what I'm doing. I thought the idea it was scoop the water and then it runs through these tubes and out. Um, so the design needed several components. It needed the, the turbine wheel, uh, it needed the input, and it needed a, a valve of some kind. So it's a multi-stage project because for a start, how do you 3D print a valve that holds pressure? Um, how do you design a turbine that spins in 3D printing? And how do you get any energy out of it? So the first issue I encountered was uh, the parts rubbing against each other. So, you know, getting this, I sanded this, I've sanded this, and even then, when you put the whole thing together, you know, they, they tend to rub. And that's the thing, like, turbines are precision machined bits of equipment. This is 3D printed on an FDM 3D printer, the, the Prusa Mark III, if you're interested. So, that was my first reminder that 3D printing isn't exactly that accurate. But the second was, you know, this whole turbine size. So this does work when gravity is being applied to the water. When it's no real pressure behind it, it's just kind of falling through gravity. It works like a water wheel. So, you know, the water would fall down and it would run through. But it didn't fit the hose. So the next stage was to make one that fitted the hose. And I actually sadly don't have that one here. I'm not sure where it is, but I needed a valve that worked. So I went with a butterfly valve, which is sim simply a big disc which occupies the pipe and then it rotates out of the way, 90 degrees, full flow, fully shut. So that's what I implemented. I actually made a 3D printed butterfly valve. And that version did work, but I actually decided to make the turbine too small in that version. So you can see it in this video, it does work, but it leaks 
massively water will find any path of least resistance so as you as you change the pressures it just goes out everywhere and also this is where i realized my complete lack of understanding of fluid dynamics you know i was expecting it to turn fairly quickly just with the water going through it but i wasn't expecting it to spin up as substantially as it was when the the, the throttle essentially was closed the valve was closed because the water's velocity would increase, therefore it would rapidly speed the turbine up. But that pressure was also pushing the hose out, so I needed to figure out a way to fit the hose onto it, which was this. So that three prototype rule, it was applied to various stages as well in this project. So I needed to figure out a way to fit an actual hose to it so it wouldn't back out due to pressure. Um, first version, you know, the end was too long. Second version, it was almost right. And we're talking, you know, changing things by point 3.5 of a millimeter to get this right. And the third version fits really nicely. So this clamps in place and holds on to the hose so I can give this uh, device full pressure. Next thing to overcome was the water going out the side. So I actually made 3D printed O-rings essentially which run up along the design in a little slot. And this was the final design. So this model encompasses too much work, if I'm going to be completely honest. And it does function. Um, the valve, as you close it, increases the velocity of the water because it's just through a narrow opening, it increases uh, its velocity from the, the source, and it actually spins this turbine at a fairly decent speed. And the governor did prove that it does actually work. They did fly out, which was really cool. But this is where I decided to call it because it became painfully obvious that I didn't know how to design a turbine and painfully obvious that 3D printing on FDM machines just wasn't gonna give me the accuracy I needed. You know, to get this valve to even work, it's got a lot of friction because of those, those O-rings and you know, this spinning isn't gonna be able to move this without increasing a huge amount of drag and then this is just not gonna work. But at the start of this video, I said that even failures can be good. And they are because this project, even though the final design doesn't really work as I wanted it to, I learned lots of things. For a start, I figured out that yes, you can actually 3D print a working mechanical governor. This thing actually works as intended, but the uh, mechanism I intended to attach it to doesn't. I also learned that you can 3D print O-rings using flexible filament, you know, this is the uh, Cocoon Create, which is fitted with a Flexion, and I printed it with this Make Shaper you know, flexible TPU. Works really well, and if you wanted to make a sealed electronics box or something like that with FDM, you could inlay 3D printed O-rings of any shape. So that's something I'm definitely gonna use in future projects. But something I did find surprising is just how lubricated that these shafts can become when water is actively flowing through them. Um, like there's no bearing in here, but when the thing's wet and running, it can spin very, very freely. So that's really cool as well. And then next, there's not really something I learned, but something I was forced to remember is that FDM isn't that accurate, especially when it comes to gentle curves. This is a circular bore, and it's really obvious to tell that the underside where the layers you know, become spaced further apart, you lose that accuracy. It's really painfully obvious to see that in the final model. And especially when you're working with like a turbine shape where you want almost no gap, it's not really gonna work. So what are the takeaways of this video? Well, if you're designing something, generally the three prototype rule works quite well. If you get up to three and things aren't working right, you might wanna go back to the drawing board, but you're never gonna get it right first time. Don't be afraid to iterate, but Three is generally my limit before I go, mm, okay, something's not working out quite right. But I'm not gonna abandon this concept. Um, the idea of like a powered sprinkler system robot thing is still on the cards, but also we're having, we're experiencing a humongous drought right now in, in New South Wales. So that also is kind of another reason this is being put off to the side because it's a waste of water unless you're, spring, you're using a sprinkler system to water plants, in which case sprinklers are also a waste of water. So this is gonna go on the side for now, but I definitely will revisit it in future. So don't be afraid to prototype, test, iterate, and fail. And if you enjoyed this video here on Making Smears, guys, I would love to have you subscribe. It is my aim to empower your creativity through technology, even if I'm doing that, showing you my failures, 
and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye.